So there's a word I keep seeing everywhere. A word. Yeah, it's not on the inside of my glasses or anything, really, but mindfulness. Is I see coming? the word mindfulness everywhere. Mindfulness. 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 Um, and it's so ubiquitous that a lot of times uh, when I meet somebody and I tell them, mm -hmm. I say, oh, yeah, we have a meditation session Mondays and Wednesdays. They say, oh, mindfulness, mm -hmm. as if they're the same thing. Mm -hmm. Um, what do you see as the strengths and limits of mindfulness that can, according to your own path? Well, I, I think I mean, there, there are some, some wise people around, not myself, <laughs> but some wiser people around who are saying it's not going to come to anything. I mean, it's becoming so uh, ubiquitous and so I don't know, messed up, I think some bad words, but it's just just spread around and diluted so it means nothingness. There's mindfulness peanut butter, there's mindfulness shoes, there's mindfulness haircuts, there's mindfulness everything. And after a while it does have no meaning. I mean Zen went through the same thing back in the 60s and 70s, you may recall, where everything was, there was the Zen of everything. And it's becoming the mindfulness of everything. So it becomes of no value whatsoever. And I think people, you know, believe they can get it in literally two minutes or one minute mm. at a time. And you can't do that. I mean, you can get a little break from your craziness, but as far as actually fundamentally changing how you operate, it's not going to happen. There are these studies, though, that show that, you know, mindfulness protocols that followed can reduce stress to a certain level. Mm -hmm. Stress-related diseases decrease, which probably accounts for the widespread enthusiasm for the practices, right? Insurance companies have a lot to gain. Mm -hmm. Healthcare providers have a lot to gain. Um, you, do you see there to be any way to integrate these practices into people's lives without this kind of vacuous mindfulness peanut butter problem? Well, I mean, symptomatically, we have lots of research that demonstrates exactly what you say. That in fact, you can ameliorate symptoms with mindfulness technologies. There's some some better than others, some that are almost worthless, but there is a value there. But for me, there's no fundamental change. I mean, yes, you've lessened your symptoms, but you're still crazy. Your life is still an <laughs> insanity. It's still madness. You're still highly stressed. Uh, you have all kinds of problems in your life. You're fearful, worried, unhappy. That doesn't change. All you're finding a way is somehow tone down just how exaggerated those symptoms are by this protocol. That's like uh, not going to solve the problem. I don't think it's going to make any difference long term. So it's more just like a band-aid uh, <laughs> approach and it's not a kind of structural transformation or structural healing right. of the person. Yeah. Um, in a way it makes it sound almost, you know, a little bit dangerous because if you give people just a little bit of mindfulness, then they'll just get well enough to remain in hell, mm -hmm. as it were. And, and they will. Yeah. I mean, they, they can convince themselves, I'm getting better, I'm getting better. But in fact, nothing has changed in their life. They still have all the same attachments. They still have all the same anxieties. All they're doing is finding a little patch for a minute or two minutes or ten minutes or whatever during the day to get them somewhere to just turn down a little bit so they aren't quite so crazy. But nothing's changed. Might it not, though, give them a taste for the ability to use introspection, reflection, inquiry on themselves and to therefore move on to something like non-duality or... Have you just not seen that in practice? Doesn't seem to. I haven't seen that. Mm. I, I, even people have been doing mindfulness for a long, long time. I mean, unless there's some teaching, something that comes to them and says, look, I need to fundamentally change my structure. I don't want to suffer anymore. And come to that with a lot of curiosity and integrity, you just won't do the hard work of turning around and looking and saying, okay, who is it that has all these problems? Mm -hmm and trying to understand that in a way that you might fundamentally change it. Now, there are people who are trying to smoosh these together, but there's a challenge there that they don't fit together very well, because one is symptom amelioration, and the other one is fundamental change. And those are not the same thing. And so you've, you've got to wonder, can you really push these one against the other? I think many of us are hoping that, in fact, it's so pervasive that many people become attracted to meditation, and they will move into non-duality. I don't think it's going to happen. Mm. I don't think it's going to be a broad-based occurrence because they haven't decided to change themselves fundamentally. And so they're not going to make that step. Just become a kind of healthier, better, 
version of a suffering self. Exactly. And, and what they'll do is they'll just load up the energy that they've gained by ameliorating their symptoms with a lot of other things to do to push them even further back into more things to get more mindfulness, to get down more symptoms. But it doesn't fundamentally change the equation. Right, so it's a little bit like there have been critiques, for example, of uh, the long-term sustainability of just focusing on the conservation of energy mm -hmm. because it seems that the more energy we conserve, mm -hmm. in fact, the more we use, right? In mm -hmm. other words, that, and so uh, yeah. if we put ourselves in a position where actually we're healthier mm -hmm. uh, because we're undergoing less stress, because we're doing um, mindfulness techniques, we're actually enabling ourselves to get an even more difficulty. Exactly. We'll just load uh, ourselves up more and more. And unless you change your, your algorithms, change how you operate, you won't make any progress. I don't think this is going to be a very popular uh, video. I think people want to think that there's a kind of stairway to heaven where you can start off with mindfulness and then get good with mindfulness and then move on to meditation and practice meditation and experience non-duality. But you're saying maybe you can't get there from here. I haven't seen it. I've seen yeah. people who've done mindfulness for decades and they come to me and they're the same person they were before. They're very skillful at sitting there and watching their mind be kind of crazy, uh -huh. but and they've they've got that ability, but there's no desire or sometimes even an ability to be able to jump out of that and make a fundamental change. So I, I I'm not very sanguine. I mean, uh -huh. you'd like to believe that we can take, you make lots of money off mindfulness because we can make them all come to to non-duality, but in fact that's not. There are different bunches of people, there are different folks trying to do one thing. And that folks have another vision of it. I don't think it's just taking this model and just putting onto this vision. This is a different thing from those things. I wish it weren't that way. Mm -hmm. If this really was the stairway to heaven, mm -hmm. then it's fantastic. But I don't see people getting on that stairway. No, it's really interesting actually because uh, you know one of the big players that is making mindfulness become so ubiquitous is, of course, as I mentioned, the insurance industry. Yeah. That they're they see that, you know, if b besides eliminating smoking, one of the things that you can really do to cut health care costs mm -hmm. is to decrease stress, stress levels. Right. And we have a very low cost, replicable way mm -hmm. to lower stress levels. And so, you know, for once we think like, oh, wow, you know, uh, the insurance companies are out to do something good because insurance companies are not really, no, we tend to not think of them as, as players yeah. uh, towards our enlightenment. Yeah, no. But it, it is interesting that perhaps it ought to give us pause that it is precisely the insurance companies that are seeking not to encourage us to be liberated, to become no, awakened, no. To, uh, to experience freedom, far, but far for your just, just live on. Right. <laughs> you know, to just be slightly better off yeah. For your three score and ten, or whatever it ends up, yeah. and being, uh, being, but in fact, there's absolutely uh, no actual improvement in what we could really clearly call quality of life. No, but people won't do it. And so the question is, okay, why do we not want to let go of that behavior set? Mm -hmm. That's what you've got—a behavior set. And so you're not willing to let go of that, then you're going to stay there. Well, you're not willing to let go of it because you think that's who you are. Exactly. Exactly. And I can't get into believe I can't get out of this. Yeah. You can get out of it. You just have to want to get out of it. Well, and you have to be willing to let go of who you think you are. Exactly. Yeah. And mindfulness doesn't have that as one of its protocols. It's, it's not wasn't designed for that. I mean that yeah. wasn't where it came from. It was really designed to, you know, ameliorate suffering. Uh -huh. We get more people have less suffering, somewhat less suffering, and that's what it does. But the, the early teachings are not about awakening, they're not about developing a whole new operating system. They're about, okay, how can we get a lot of people to have a little less unhappiness in their lives? Right, but it's interesting because if I remember my Buddhism 101, there's at least two different kinds of suffering. Mm -hmm. There's this kind of like suffering that occurs when you have finished eating a chocolate bar and there's no more. <laughs> and then there's a the kind of capital S suffering that is part of our essential condition. Yeah. as finite exactly. uh, living beings. Exactly. And the way you're telling the story here, it sounds like mindfulness is going after the lowercase mm -hmm. suffering, mm -hmm. which is, you know, experiencing these stress levels and the symptoms that right. uh, exist, but really leaving the capital S suffering to flourish in some ways. It's just too hard, it's too complicated, 
It's too disruptive to my vision of myself. Mm -hmm. I don't want to change my life that much. I don't want to let go of any of my attachments. Okay, then you're going to be, be guest suffering. Mm -hmm. So mindfulness is, uh, it allows one to remain a consumer, mm -hmm. but just a less stressed out one. Exactly. Over the long Until you expand your consumption. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> of mindfulness peanut butter, perhaps. Exactly, mindfulness peanut butter.